Welcome back. So we're finally going to get around to what we talked about in video one, and that is putting in the image of the railroad into your available space. So here's our drawing we made of the railroad room with its nice wide red lines that we can easily see. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in that image of the Red Rock Northern from the Model Railroader magazine, and then we're going to size it to fit the area that we have. But before we do that, let's do this. We're going to go to Home, we're going to go to Layers, and we're going to add a layer for this photo. So we'll come down here, I'm going to do Add Layer, and we'll rename this Hit enter. That's now our active layer. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to freeze the room outline layer. And the reason we're going to do this is because we don't want to accidentally change the location of anything we have on that layer. So we're going to come down here to room outline and we're going to click this open lock here. You'll notice that room outline changed to red and the lock is now closed. That means I can't grab anything and move it around on that layer. Everything on that layer is frozen in place. I can still come over and look at it, and down at the bottom I can get the information about it, but I can't move it. I can't edit it in any way. It's always a good idea to lock layers that have any items on it that you don't want to move. Okay, so let's uh, put in that picture of the Red Rock Northern. Let's deselect that. We're going to come up here, we're going to go to Insert. What we're going to do is we're going to type in the dimensions of the rectangle that we're going to be adding. And the rectangle will contain the picture of the Red Rock Northern. So we know the original layout is 9 by 11 feet. So what we'll do is we'll set the width here to 132 inches. And we'll set the height to 108 inches. Then we'll come over here. We're going to click on Add Rectangle. Come down here. I'm going to put my cursor in the middle of the drawing because whenever you add anything like a surface, a rectangle, or a circle, the insert point is always the center of that item. So I will left click now, and there is a 9 by 11 foot rectangle. The next thing we want to do now is we want to come over and we want to select the rectangle. You don't select a rectangle or a circle or a surface by clicking in the middle. You have to come out to the edge. Notice how the edge gets highlighted, and you click the edge. When you do that, the outline becomes highlighted. You get a little handle up here. You could rotate it that way. Or you can right click on the edge of the rectangle and that'll pull up the sub menu and you can do things like delete, rotate, flip, all that kind of good stuff. Right now, what we're concerned about is we'll highlight that and that brings up the tools, surfaces, sub menu. These are all the things that you can do to that rectangle, and that's explained in video 42 in more detail. But right now, what we're going to want to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to do Load Image. So I'll click on that, and it brings up the folder where I have all of my images. And we're going to select the Red Rock Northern. Hit Open. Wait. And there it is. And now we want to place this image into the upper left-hand corner of our room because that's going to be the starting point for all of our modifications. So let's go up here. Now it's hard to see, but there's a little circle up in that corner. Let's zoom in a little bit on that. And you'll see that point right there. Go back out. I'm going to hover over that. I'm going to click on it. And it brings up another sub-menu. And this time it allows me to place the XY coordinates of that circle. Now, I can move that circle. It's called a point. I can move just that point, or I can move the entire surface. And let me show you the difference real fast. So we're going to put it up here in this corner, which is 12, 12. So let's put in 12, 12. Hit Enter. And look what happens. It moved just that point. Let's undo that. Let's select it again. Now, I'm going to say Move Surface. And we're going to put in 12. And 12. And now it moved the entire image right up into the corner. So it's at the exact starting point that we want for this drawing. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to expand this drawing in the Y dimension. 
so that it fills the room all the way down to this wall here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. We're going to click on the border. We're going to call up this sub menu again. We're going to come over here and we're going to type in the dimensions that we want for our image. And this is only for the image. This width and height does not affect the rectangle. It only affects the size of the image. Now, next to that is a box that says maintain aspect ratio. So that means if I change this dimension here in the height, it will also change the width to maintain the aspect ratio. We don't want that right now. So we're going to turn that off. Then we're going to come down here and we're going to select the height and we're going to put in 121.5 inches and hit enter. And you'll notice that it moved in the Y dimension, but did not move in the X dimension. You'll also notice that you can't see the entire drawing now. So what we have to do is come over here and hit adjust outline, and that will change the dimensions of the rectangle to fit the image. So let's do that. And now you can see the rectangle fits the image. One of the non features of any rail is I can't lock this point to the corner of my room. So we'll come back up here. We'll select that point again. And we'll put in, it's already 12 on the X, and we'll put in 12 on the Y. That moves it down. And you'll notice it now fills that part of the room perfectly. So I have some extra room over here, and I'd like to expand the railroad out this way. So for right now, I'm going to expand it out to 12 and a half feet in the X dimension. So again, we'll come here. We'll click that. We're going to come up here. We have maintain aspect ratio off. And I'm going to type in 150 inches or 12 and a half feet. You'll notice it moved again. Adjust outline. Come back over here. 12 by 12. Hit enter. Pops it in. Leaves me a little bit of room here because I have a light switch here I want to protect. And I've just expanded the original 9 by 11 to be a 10 by 12 and a half foot railroad. Let me take this out real fast. We're going to delete that. Now I showed you how to do it that way because I wanted you to see how to change the X and the Y dimensions of the image individually and how to properly place the image up in the corner. But let me show you a little quicker way to do this. We would go to insert. We'd come up here to width and we would say 150 inches. We'd go to height 121.5. Add rectangle. Pop that in, select it, say load image, hit Red Rock Northern or whatever railroad you want to have. And there it is already sized for you. Then you just come up here and do 12 by 12 and you're done. So if you have an image like this and you know the final dimensions, that's the quick way to do it. But I wanted to show you the other way because that way I could show you how to do the X and the Y individually. Now, using this insert method, you can put an image into anything you want. You can put it into a circle. You can put it into a rectangle. You can put it into a surface. And I believe it's for adding scenery elements to your final design. So let's say you did that and you're not happy with that image and you wanted to do another image. Well, it's easy to take it out. You just come up here and hit remove image and away it goes and you're left with your rectangle. Let's put the image back in. Another thing you can do, and this is kind of cool. So right now I have this narrow section near my door and this wider section over by the window. Now this is kind of nice because it's going to be a duck under. With the narrow section here, I don't have to crawl too far on the floor. Not going to affect my three-year-old granddaughter, but it's going to affect 65-year-old me. But if I wanted it to be the other way, I can select my rectangle. I can come up here and I can do flip, and it flips it around. So now you can get an idea of how the railroad would look if you built it the other way. So that's kind of a nice feature. I kind of like that. And in some ways, I kind of like the way it looks there. I'm going to have to think about this one. Let's put it back. So this is pretty cool. You can take any published track plan, resize it, move it around, do what you want to it to see how it would fit into the space that you have available. For this track plan, it was easy because it's basically just a twice around the room. And when you expand it like this, you're just going to end up with wider radius curves. 
Let me show you how it would work with something else. Let's get rid of this guy. What we're going to do is we're going to insert a 4 by 8 table. So our width will be 96 and our height will be 48. Select rectangle, put it in. There it is. Let's select that. Now I'm going to go up and I'm going to load an image. And this will be plan 13, which is four better than plan nine. And this is from a really old Atlas track plan book that I've had since I was about eight years old. So here it is. I just put it into a four by eight, but I'm going to come up here. I'm going to say just outline. And there it is. And if you look at it, let's put it up in the corner here. You'll notice in the Y dimension, it came out pretty good. It came out pretty good. It's lining up on the grid fairly well. It's never going to be exact because your scanner may not scan it properly. It may change the size a little bit. If you look in the X dimension, it's fairly close. Now I can stretch this drawing. I can make it longer. I can make it wider. But when you do something like that, it's going to mess up the curves quite a bit. So say you wanted this railroad to extend from the corner over here, over to here. Probably in this instance, the best thing to do would be to slice your image in half and then move the two pieces apart and then design something in between. Another nice thing about being able to put images into rectangles is that you could design modular sections or take a published plan that has modular sections, cut them up, put them in the rectangles, put them in your drawing, and then move them around as you see fit. Because like I said earlier, not only can you move them, you can also rotate them like that. Okay, so let's go over just a couple things that I think are really important when you're doing this part of your design work. And that is make sure you put your image on a separate layer. Make sure you freeze any layers where you don't want to move anything or anything that's critical, kind of like the room outline. I said freeze is actually they use lock and unlock in any rail. Remember that when you put an image in, if you don't get the rectangle size right the first time for your image, you can always come up and hit Adjust Outline, and that'll make the rectangle fit your image. Also remember that the width and the height only affect your image. They do not affect the rectangle. And if you want to move in one dimension only, say the X dimension or the Y dimension only, be sure you turn off Maintain Aspect Ratio before you start typing in your numbers. As for all this other stuff here, I go over all of that in video number 42, and I explain all of this. The bring forward, the send back, the fill color, the line color, and transparency. That's all in video 42, and I recommend that you check that one out. Okay, that's it for this one. In the next video, we'll start adding track to the Red Rock Northern Track Plan. Hope to see you then.